Dear colleagues, thank you for inviting me to present on the new Ontario Chamber OCT from Heidelberg Engineering, Ontario. I want to present our initial clinical experience in a busy cataract clinic. These are my financial disclosures. I'm consulting for Alcon, Star, FirstQ, Centricity, Aura, and Santé. I will also um, use the opportunity to acknowledge my uh, co-author for this presentation, my PhD candidate Björn Jadrum. Together with Björn, we have put together a small agenda for this presentation. Starting with a small presentation of iFocus iClinic regarding both clinical and scientific activities. Then present on the anterior technical platform, how the instrument is set up in our clinic and share with you both scientific and clinical experience with this instrument. We will sum up both positive experiences and some uh, practical challenges followed by some cases at the end of this presentation. iFocus iClinic is situated in a small city in, in Norway, Haugesund, and we drain a population of approximately 150,000 inhabitants. Our clinical profile uh, is mainly cataract and uh, um, refractive surgery. We perform 1,500 to 2,000 infracular surgeries per year. 25% advanced technology IOLs, 50% Torix, and probably around 20% RLE and cataract relation. Our scientific profile is mainly focused on dry eye and biometry. Uh, our first PhD candidate will uh, defend his thesis in May this year uh, about accuracy of post-LASIK biometry. Further on, we have three ongoing PhD projects uh, focusing on OSD-DED in cataract surgery. And we just yesterday uh, got an approval or for funding of a, a last project uh, using artificial intelligence and deep machine learning uh, to crack the code of OSD and free and dry eye disease. My personal scientific profile started actually in 1999 when I defended my thesis computerized 3D analysis of the optic nerve head using the first generation of Heidelberg's HRT scanning laser of Tarnoscope. Now to the anterior technical platform. The Heidelberg Engineering Anterior, um, we had initially on loan in our first PhD program. After one year, we decided to purchase the instrument based on our experience. And now it's an important part of our clinical and scientific activities. This OCT is built on multimodal imaging platform optimized for the interior segment. It uses a swept source OCT, 1300 nanometer, high quality images and comprehensive measurements are being made. It has a very short acquisition times. The cornea application needs only less than one second and it has an advanced built-in eye tracking technology. Talking about image quality, we changed our platform from Tome Casia 1 to Anterian, and it was obvious to all the users that we moved to another technical quality platform. You can really see the different uh, anatomical structures and differentiate those very easily. With the Anterian, you can um, look at cornea, you can see the epithelium, stroma, endothelium. You can see the sclera spur, the iris, and, and the iris pigmentation band. And you can see the, the lens and the different parts of the lens through the pupil. And it's very easy to differentiate between the different layers 
which is a nice thing for the doctor, but it's also a very nice tool to use for patient education. These are the technical specification. And the Anterion is built up like uh, a couple of other instruments from Heidelberg uh, in modes. Um, every single instrument is equipped with an imaging app. And then you can build both the corneal app, the cataract app, and the matrix app on top of that. So this can be individually upgraded. The imaging app, which is uh, in every single unit, um, can be customized by you as a user. You can choose the number of scan lines, scan length and height, resolution, and position of the scan, and the number of images for averaging. And you can use it for peripheral or central imaging. Further on, you can use it to visualize certain aspects of the eye anatomy, here exemplified with the limbal and scleral uh, regions. You can then move on to the corneal uh, application where you can detect and monitor for corneal alteration, either in a single view, ODOS comparison, you can use the equipment for follow-up um, examination and see differentiation maps over time. And you can monitor this in a multi-view um, mode as well. The corneal app uses an advanced eye tracking uh, system centered on the corneal vertex. It uses 65 radial B scans, 256 A scans per B scan, altogether 16,640 uh, 16, scanning points, which really ends up with a good um, uh, image quality. The acquisition time is less than one second and you scan up to eight millimeters of diameter of corneal maps. Segmentation of anterior and posterior surface is made automatically, automatically, and you can use ray tracing technology during the application. You have full topography and uh, topography um, measurements, including total corneal power, wavefront, elevation, etc. In the cataract uh, application, you combine measurements for cataract planning surgery, corneal analysis, anterior chamber depth, lens thickness, and axial length. And this is combined in one single acquisition. You don't need to, to change instrumentation. And this is really a step forward because when you look at uh, uh, cataract planning and biometry, you know that every single instrument has an inborn source of error. And if you have to change the patient to different instruments, uh, instruments, these error will be multiplied and you can end up with a very large error source potentially. So having everything in one single instrument, both practically, but also from a um, quality or metrics point of view is a clear advantage. OCT section images for visualizing of the anterior, anterior chamber. Um, looking at all the aspects of the cord, you have the corneal front surface, the back surface, the lenticular front surface, and the back surface, and then you have a clear image of the retinal profile, giving you access to all the measurements that you need for thorough cataract biometry. It provides all the measurements for IOL calculations. Spheric and thoracic IOL calculators are built in, and you have access to most of the standard IOL formulas for advanced methods of IOL calculation. And I will, uh, at, at top of that, really pinpoint that this uh, instrument gives you an easy access to ray tracing, combining anterior OCT measurements with Oculix ray tracing and uh, software. And this open up, opens up a new perspective in biometry. 
From a theoretical point of view, I think it's obvious that individual measurements for individual planning should be uh, the way to go. But until recently, this has been destroyed by having to use different instruments in order to collect all the data. And then the noise from all the instruments really destroys the potential of ray tracing um, technology. In the metrics application, uh, you can measure central corner thickness, anterior chamber depth, and anterior chamber angle, spur to spur, angle to angle, lens thickness and lens volt, pupil diameter, and wide to wide measurements. And you can do automatic and manual measurements using the instrument. And you will have access to really hands on um, anatomical information. You can use it uh, with six different scan lines, visualizing the whole anterior chamber at 12 different positions. Now to the setup in our clinic using the anterior. Since we do a lot of, of cataract and refractive surgery, of course, biometry is probably the main focus where we use this instrument in our clinic. And we use it together with different other instruments as well. Until um, Anterion uh, was bought, we mainly trusted the Landstar in combination with Varian planning system. We want to do a thorough biometry ahead of surgery, then use this information to plan thoroughly the, what kind of lens, what kind of toric uh, angle, and so on. And then, then using a visualization system perioperatively to, to uh, show us the information. Recently, we have tested the new Argos biometer from Alcon together with Anterior and our uh, long-term ex uh, experience with the lens star. Now a bit about our scientific experiences. I did acknowledge my uh, colleague Bjorn Jadren for his work using the anterior and combining ray tracing IOL calculation based on OCT data. And these um, uh, studies has been uh, published yet. And, and his study was about using ray tracing in post-LASIK cases. Looking at both arithmetic and absolute refractive prediction error with different uh, uh, instruments and technology platforms, you can see the variability here in arithmetic uh, um, error sources and absolute refractive prediction error. And the lowest prediction error you gained using anterior and ray tracing, followed by Cassia and ray tracing, followed, followed by Barrett's non-racing technology and the, and the, um, formula with the, with the highest, uh, refractive prediction error was the Hagis L. If you look at this slightly different, and you calculate how many, how large a percentage of the eyes ended up within plus minus 0 0.25 of prediction error. Using anterior and oculus, 60% achieve this accuracy. If you go up to 0 0.5, 88% achieve this accuracy using the uh, anterior combined with oculus. Huh? And all of them had an accuracy of less than uh, uh, 0 0.75 diopters of uh, predictive error. And you can combine this with, you can compare this with, with Cassia and Oculix, Barrett's um, formula and Hagis, and you really see how much, uh, so how, uh, the percentage of ice within plus minus 0 0.25 is much higher using anterior and the ray tracing technology. And this um, makes a difference in clinical use. 
Another um, way of using OCT um, technology is to perform optimal optimization of ICL sizing. Everyone that has used ICL as a technology to to uh, treat um, refractive errors know that one of the hardest part is to choose the right sizing. And uh, Nakamura has used OCT in order to fine tune this um, algorithm. So advanced ICL sizing uses angle to angle and lens rise to, to calculate the right size. And the rather complex algorithm is that optimal ICL size is times 0 0.475 plus 0 0.688 times anterior chamber width spur to spur plus 0 0.388 uh, clear line as uh, a crystalline lens rise, which is this measurements from the basal line until the top of the lens above this uh, um, uh, yellow line. So utilizing this technology in a practical case, you have the equal, um, aqueous depth of 3.11 millimeters. You have a CCT plus aqueous depth of 3.67. So anterior chamber volume of 152 square millimeter or, or quadrat millimeter. Um, the angle to angle distance was 12.72. The spur to spur was 12.73. And utilizing um, Nakamura's formula, we ended up with an ideal size of 13.33 millimeters. And the closest ICL uh, size uh, manufacturer is the 13.2. Now a bit about our clinical experiences. The current use is mainly focused on IOL biometry, diagnostic use, and of course, also patient and sur sur uh, surgeon education. OCT measurements from the anterior is high quality and can you, you can really use the images to show to the patient, to show them this posterior uh, 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 cataract and explain how this is affecting the central visual line and how and why they have to be operated in, in order to solve this problem. So it gives you as a surgeon valuable information, the location of the cataract, and, and it gives the patient a really good image of what's going on and what we have to solve during surgery. In the biometry part, you have the average K readings, the SIMK, which you see here, you have, uh, you combine the anterior surface with the posterior uh, surface and you end up with a total corneal power, which is more likely to give you better accuracy than only relying on the anterior surface, which most of the biometric formulas have used until recently. You can use the instrumentation to look at different pathology, in this case, a partial uh, corneal edema. Again, you can learn from this as a doctor. You can show it to the patient, instruct them, and teach them what is going on in their eyes. Another clinical example, which is which really puzzled me, was an image of a posterior capsule op opacification, and how it looked like directly after YAG. You can see the posterior capsule is curling up and you have a free site now um, in the optical uh, pathway without this disturbing um, PCO uh, in this patient. And it's so easy to see how this is, ends up after YAG laser surgery. Our clinic uses add-ons on a regular basis to either primarily treat advanced um, refractive cases 
or to either repair our own or other referrals um, which have a refractive miss. So this obviously shows us that the additional lens is placed in the correct position together with the original in the bag lens. Another situation with narrow angle, you have a, a positive lens rise, you have a shallow anterior chamber, and you have a partly compromised narrow angle in this um, case, which would probably guide you towards cataract surgery in order to widen the uh, anterior uh, the, the, the angle in this particular patient. We have talked about ICL sizing and vault. And in this case, you see the crystalline lens. You see the perfectly positioned ICL in front of the lens. And you see what is probably a perfect vault of about 400 microns. We have used um, the anterior in different uh, cataract and RLE special cases. We use the race, tracing uh, calculation in post-laser patients, both myopic and hyperopic, and also in presbyopia LASIK cases. We can use it for very short eyes and very long eyes, and also in irregular corneas like keratoconus, corneal graft patients, and removed LASIK flaps. And finally, advanced dense cataract you get access to extra length, lens thickness, and you can use all, both um, automatic and manual adjustment uh, measurements. And you can do multiple acquisition um, in order to, to have the best case scenario for preoperative evaluation of the patient's uh, biometry. If we compare anterior versus lens style, which we have used for the last, more than the last 10 years. Anterior has its advantages with a much shorter measuring, measurement time. It seems to be less uh, tear film dependent, although we don't have the final scientific answer to this. It definitely gives the higher patient comfort due to, due to the infrared lightning um, acquisition. It has tomography included in the cataract application. You can have access to total corneal power and use advanced ray tracing software in order to, to, to do individual measurements and individual um, biometry uh, in individual patients. You can visualize the crystalline lens very good in order to train both the surgeon and the patient and you can visualize the cataract as well. The small disadvantages that we have seen during more than 18 months of, of clinical experience is a bit sluggish joystick, and I know that Heidelberg has now addressed this in order to fix it. And until recently, there has been no average ring of different measurements, and we see that we, if we take two or three measurements and average them, we get even higher or lower variability in our measurements. If we look at LENSTAR advantages, it averages multiple measurements. This provides a standard deviation, which indirectly gives you a quality measurements that you can rely on. It has a higher repeatability if you have a stable tear film, but this is not always the case uh, in our population. The disadvantages can be summed up as unreliable if you have an unstable tear film, if you only have, uh, you have only an uh, access to anterior cornea, and there is a relatively long measuring time in some patients. And some patients are also complaining about the bright light for patients using the T-cone topometry unit. Now to some cases. This is an ICL case in a 24-year-old male, hyperopic toric case with anterior chamber depth preoperative of 2.86 and 2.82, judged by Pentacam. If we looked at the slit lamp postoperatively, we would 
regard this as a 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 millimeters. But using the anterior, we get access to, get access to um, um, very nice uh, measurements. In this case, 871 uh, uh, micrometer in the right eye compared to 829 uh, micrometer in the left eye. We can also directly see that the angle is not compromised, although you have a relatively high uh, watch. And in this case, with a low intraocular pressure, we decided that we will await the situation uh, to see if the vault is going to diminish. The ideal vault should be between 250 and 750 to 1000 square uh, uh, micrometer, but this depends on different other measurements as well. We have also used the anterior for IOL calculation in different scenarios. And these are our data from a dry eye study that we are performing right now. Um, we looked at the, the predictive, also the refractive predictive error in using different technologies. Uh, and we used the lens star, the anterior for actual length measurements and IOL power measurements. And in this case, the lowest prediction error was achieved in the right eye using the lens star. And in the left eye, the anterior could to compare with the Barrett technology, whereas the oculix and ray tracing ended up with larger prediction areas. This is another case where the ray tracing technology was superior, had the lowest absolute prediction error compared to Barrett and anterior Barrett in this case. And look at the differences between uh, Landstar anterior, 1.89 in, in um, K readings. So this is not a minor difference. And, the, and, and I want to pinpoint at this point that when you change platform, you shouldn't trust what you see in the beginning. You have to do, build up your own mon uh, nomogram in order to understand and utilize the full potential of this technology. Another uh, case from the dry eye study, male 60 years of age, a main difference between K readings of 0 0.51 to 0 0.36 between the two eyes. The right eye had the lowest prediction area using ray tracing compared to the left eye, but the lowest prediction area was measured by the lens star. Another um, similar uh, result from a female 77 years of age. In this case, the anterior oculus ray tracing technology showed the lowest uh, prediction area in both eyes. And summing up this preliminary report from these dry eye patients in eight, 14 eyes, uh, eyes, eight patients, you see that the Landstar Barrett showed the, the, the highest variability compared to the anterior Barrett and the, and the anterior, um, anterior combined with ray tracing technology. So there is room pro, for improving utilizing this promising technology. Another case of post-myopic um, uh, laser uh, patient, where you see that both the right and the left eye show the lowest prediction error using anterior and ray tracing in both eyes. Um, this was the same also in this case, 0 0.06 and 0 0.29. And I can note here that the OD was mistaken to be uh, laser treated, which was a mistake. And you ended up with an erroneous Barrett TK prediction error of 0 0.87. However, if you had used the Oculus ray tracing technology, this wouldn't have affected the calculation. So ray tracing is individual measurements and individual um, calculations based on the patient's individual measurements. And looking at, uh, again, 
the published um, post LASIK study, the lowest, lowest prediction area was achieved with anterior and ox, uh, oculix, followed by uh, Casia and other OCT device and ray tracing, followed by Barrett, and the, the, the highest variability was shown by the Hagis L formula. Um, the high ho and this is a high hub, uh, high prop case, um, where the right eye showed that the anterior Barrett combination showed the lowest prediction area in, in this case. So odd eyes should be more carefully examined than standard eyes. So um, when we then looked at cylinder prediction error, Combining, combining different um, strategies of examination and technologies, the best or the lowest prediction area and the lowest variability was shown using the Barrett Toric calculator. Um, tightly followed by anterior oculus um, and, and the anterior um, true corneal power calculations. But there, we have now started uh, to, uh, to to look to look at this uh, work, and our next ambition is to refine the toric ray tracing algorithm to match and hopefully outperform the Barrett's uh, formula in this case. This is a very special case. It's my refractive optometrist being operated. Uh, implanting Vividi lenses in, in December 2020. And he has reported varying subjective refraction, refraction all the way until today, uh, uh, almost five months postoperatively. We then made some experiments because he reported that after uh, a high um, um, near prestanda one evening, he will be more myopic the next day. Then we measured him with anterior on different uh, occasions, and we could see that he had various K readings over time postoperatively, with a difference of um, 0 0.35 millimeter, uh, sorry, or the, um, um, sorry, the K readings uh, differed by uh, 0 0.125 diopters uh, between measurements. And if we looked at, um, at um, uh, anterior chamber depth, we measured uh, um, 0 0.14 millimeters of difference between different measurements. It can be say, said that this patient has a very large pupil or more than 6 uh, millimeters mesopic pupil, and this may contribute to his varying um, um, uh, anterior chamber depth and K readings. And therefore, um, uh, a resulting refractive variable variability with different myopic reaction. When this patient is stabilized completely, and we believe it will be, then we plan to treat him with add-ons. Looking at the future, we would love to see an averaging of several measurements within biometry. At least two, hopefully three. And I think with, with the anterior um, technology, this can be made very fluently. We miss more topography overlays, and we definitely uh, miss the integration with Varian or um, any other uh, imaging guiding system. And this is uh, based on the fact that we are treating a lot of our patients with toric lenses, and we believe that OCT biometry might be superior to the reflection tomometry and today it's time consuming to make to make the the um, the instrument also the measurements with the anterior then transfer it manually to the variance system for planning 
and then actually see it on the screen while operating. So I urge Anterion and also Alcon to find a way to make this cooperation possible. So after more than 18 months in use, my conclusions are as follows. Anterion is a very practical instrument. It's a very useful instrument with different clinical applications um, in different fields of ophthalmology. It has proven to be reliable, both for clinical, but also for scientific use. And we have had very little downtime, actually none during these 18 months. We regard it as a very uh, valuable addition to our clinical instrumentation. But we strongly believe that we can see more potential using this high-tech OCT, providing epithelial maps and also um, searching for different uh, differences in tear film, helping us to make more objective dry eye assessment in the future. Thank you for listening to my presentation.